When you hear the word inflation, you're probably thinking it's something increasing, and you're right. And if it feels like your currency doesn't quite go as far as it used to, you're not imagining things. It's inflation. Hello and welcome. Before we dive into the worlds of global inflation, please like, share and subscribe to this channel. Inflation is often defined or measured as the continued increase in the general level of prices of goods and services over a certain period, usually a year. Inflation has plunged many countries into long periods of instability. It is one mountain that many politicians promise to level during elections. In fact, inflation was even declared public enemy number one in the United States by President Gerald Ford in 1974. Long-lasting episodes of high inflation are often the result of lax monetary policies. If the money supply grows too big, compared to the size of the economy, the unit value of the currency diminishes. In other words, its purchasing power falls and prices rise. Once inflation becomes prevalent throughout an economy, the expectation of further inflation becomes an overriding concern for the government, businesses and consumers. Inflation can be a concern because it makes money safe today less valuable tomorrow. So why is global inflation so important and how does it affect individuals? Let's take a little walk down the memory lane to see how inflation affected countries in time past. Hungary, between 1945 and 1946, recorded its highest monthly inflation rate at 4.19 times 10 to the 16th power. The equivalent daily inflation rate was 207%. After World War II, like many countries, Hungary was left in shambles. Their industries were inoperable and the remaining of their assets were seized during the war. This made the number of goods produced go down, but the amount of money in circulation stayed the same, this leading to inflation. Instead of Hungary reducing inflation by reducing the amount of money in circulation, although this would have made it much worse, Hungary took a different approach, intentionally causing inflation. The Hungarian government printed as much money as it could. What started as 25 billion pengo in July 1945 grew to 1.6 trillion pengo in just six months. Four months after that, the money grew to 65 quadrillion, which is a million billion, and two months after that to 47 septrillion, that's 47 trillion trillion. In simpler terms, <laughs> something that cost 379 pengo in September of 1945 went up to a trillion trillion 10 months later. This went down in history as the worst case of hyperinflation. Hyperinflation occurs when inflation rises rapidly and the value of the currency of the country crashes rapidly. In Zimbabwe between 2007 and 2008, its highest monthly inflation rate was 79.6 billion percent. After Zimbabwe gained independence from the United Kingdom in 1980, this opened up a whole new profession of politicians. Politicians wanted the support of people and were willing to do anything to get votes. These politicians, who had control over government spending, decided to offer free stuff to their citizens. And this created a spending problem for the government. In addition to the situation, the government took over the farms of white farmers, who didn't know how to farm, and gave it to black farmers which created a food shortage situation. The bank sector began to collapse. The government blamed its financial crisis on sanctions imposed by the EU and the US during Mugabe's tenure. This gave way to hyperinflation. The general rule of thumb is that hyperinflation occurs when the monthly inflation is above 50%. Since 1998, Zimbabwe has been hovering around a 50% annual inflation rate. The prices in shops went up several times a day, water and power cuts happened often and there were queues at banks, petrol stations and a severe shortage of food in the supermarkets. Incidentally, this is a problem they are still struggling with today. Such high levels of inflation have been desideratious 
for many countries. And countries have had to take difficult and painful measures to bring inflation back to a reasonable level. Sometimes by giving up their national currency, as Zimbabwe has. You might ask, what causes inflation? The gradual rise in prices that led to inflation can be caused by two main ways. Demand pull inflation and cost push inflation. Demand pull inflation happens when demand for goods or services increases, but supply remains the same, pulling up prices. For example, at the start of the COVID-19 pandemic, the increase in demand for indoor, socially distanced activities, combined with the highly anticipated release of Animal Crossing, New Horizons saw the price of the Nintendo Switch gaming system almost double on some secondary markets. Because Nintendo could not increase production due to factory halts from the pandemic, Nintendo could not raise its supply to meet rising consumer demand, resulting in increasingly higher prices. Cost push inflation happens when the supply of goods or services is limited, but demand remains the same, pushing up prices. For example, lots of people need a certain amount of gas to fuel their cars, but when international treaties or natural disasters reduce the oil supply, gas prices rise because demand remains even as the supply shrinks. So how do we measure inflation? An individual's cost of living depends on the prices of goods and services and the share of each household in the budget. So to measure an individual's cost of living, government agency conduct household service to identify a basket of commonly purchased items and monitor over time the cost of this basket. The cost of this basket at a given time, expressed relative to a base year, is the consumer price inflation, CPI. And the percentage change in the CPI over a certain period is consumer price inflation, the most widely used measure of inflation. For instance, if the base CPI is 100 and the current CPI is 110, inflation is 10% over the period. Now, how does this affect individuals and the global at large? Honestly, to the extent of households' nominal income, which they receive in current money, does not increase as much as the prices do. They are worse off because they can afford to purchase less. Real income is equivalent to the standard of living. When real incomes are rising, the standard of living does too, and vice versa. In reality, prices change at different stages. For example, the price of traded commodities change every day. In an inflationary environment, the uneven rise of prices inevitably reduces the purchasing power of some consumers. Inflation can also disrupt the purchasing power for some recipients and payers of fixed interest rates. Is there a way out? Policymakers must find the right balance between boosting demand and growth when needed, without overstimulating the economy and causing inflation. The rise of inflation is triggering anxiety around the world. As a rush in demand following the ease of the COVID-19 lockdown, has been confronted by supply bottlenecks and rising prices of energy and raw materials. This outlook has darkened the global economy as a stream of data from Europe and Asia suggested growth faltered in the third quarter. From Sweden and the UK to Germany and Japan, jammed up ports and bottlenecks in the global flow of raw materials have rocketed manufacturers causing factories to halt production and executive to warn customers they will have to wait for urgently needed goods. In Europe, the Economic and Monetary Union was set up to solve the inflation crisis. The EMU involved introducing a brand new single currency in the participating European countries and setting up a new central bank responsible for adopting and implementing the euro area's common monetary policy. Fortunately, the global economic recovery is continuing even as the pandemic researches. However, the fault lines opened up by COVID-19 are looking more persistent. Vaccine access and early policy support are the principal drivers of the gaps. 
According to the International Monetary Fund, the global economy is projected to grow 5.9% in 2021 and 4.9% in 2022. Sadly, the downward flow of 2021 reflects a downgrade for advanced economies. This is in part due to supply disruptions and for low-income developing countries due to worsening pandemic dynamics. Looking ahead, inflation is projected to peak in the final month of 2021, but it is expected to return to pre-pandemic levels by mid-2022 for most economies. However, given the recovery's uncharted nature, considerable uncertainties remain and inflation could exceed predictions for a variety of reasons. But clear communication combined with appropriate monetary and fiscal policies can help prevent inflation scares from unhinging inflation expectations. Though it can be frustrating to think about your currency as losing value, most economists consider a small amount of inflation of about 2% as a sign of a healthy economy. A moderate inflation rate encourages you to spend or invest your money today rather than stuff it under your mattress and allow its value to diminish. I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you'd like more content like this, please hit the notification bell so you never miss an upload again. Till our next video, bye.